Good morning. Let me, um, let me begin by uh, thanking you, Madam President, for having me here. I want to say thank you to all of Maryland's educators who work every day on behalf of our state's children. As many of you know, I have five children of my own, four boys who are now attending public school in Queen Anne's County. God bless the teachers in Queen Anne's County. And a little girl, uh, now three months old, who no doubt will be following in their footsteps. As parents of kids in Maryland's public schools, Kim and I see firsthand how committed and dedicated our state's educators are to our state's children and how hard you work to equip our kids with the tools and the resources they need to thrive in tomorrow's economy. This weekend, in between the workshops and the presentations, I hope all of you will take a step back and take a minute to reflect on just how important a role you play, not just narrowly in the lives of the students you teach, but perhaps more broadly in the future growth of our state and our nation. Here in Maryland, we have an awful lot to be thankful for. As you just heard, we've got a state that's committed and dedicated to education as a priority, even in very, very difficult times. We should be proud of that and thankful for that. And we should obviously be thankful for a second year in a row, Maryland's public education ranked number one in the nation. The praise for these accomplishments, however, belong not to the politicians or to the bureaucrats, but to you, the men and women of the Maryland Teaching Corps. As a father, I want to take the opportunity to thank all of the men and women who provide not only for their education, safety, and development, but for that all the students in Maryland who have ever relied on teachers for the extra encouragement needed to achieve and learn in a healthy environment. There's a lot of discussion and debate these days about education policy, perhaps more so than any time I can remember. Discussion and debate are obviously good and are healthy, but it's important that those of us in the policy-making policy world keep our eye on what is most important. And in thinking about what's most important, I can't help but think about one of the biggest frustrations I've had during my brief time in Washington. That's the trend we see too much of in Congress these days, where too many decisions on both sides of the aisle are made off of three or four talking points, instead of lawmakers setting aside the rhetoric and really demonstrating some independent, critical thinking about the challenges we face. This lack Thank you. <laughs> this lack of independent and critical thought is dangerous, not only in politics and government, but really in all walks of our lives. It's easier just to toe the line, but it doesn't really result in better outcomes. That's why I think it's critically important that as we engage in this new national debate about education reform, we keep our eye on the overreaching goal which is to produce a generation of graduates who have the tools and the knowledge they need to think critically, to question what they see and hear around them, and to lead our state into the future. Reform is good, but it must be reform that allows our schools and our educators to better mold a generation of students who can think critically. Accountability is good, but it must be accountability in measuring progress towards the ultimate goal. Testing is just one tool in the toolbox for measuring that progress. It is not an end of itself. So whether you teach science or math or English or history, I encourage you to not only teach your students the facts and the figures that come from the textbooks, but also the critical learning skills that will help them to be thoughtful and independent adults. 
As you speak to politicians and government officials here this weekend, including myself, urge them to rededicate themselves to putting the full force of their efforts behind you and the work that you do. It is not enough to have dedicated teachers, aides, and administrators. You must have the resources you need, both inside and outside of the classroom, to continue to educate at the highest levels for generations to come. I would like to personally thank all of the educators who are here from the counties that I represent. I heard uh, Madam President mention them. All the counties on the Eastern Shore, portions of Baltimore, Hartford, and Anne Arundel counties, thank you all personally for what you do. And again, God bless those teachers in Queen Anne's. <laughs> and I want to congratulate all of you for what you have achieved, achieved and promise to continue fighting for those goals in the United States Congress. In order to improve our schools, we must recommit to working together to recruit and retain high-quality educators in Maryland, particularly during this difficult time. You have my word that I will continue to advocate for adequate and equitable funding for public education as a shared responsibility among local, state, and federal government. Again, thank you for all you do. Thank you for being here in Ocean City. Please stay for an extra week if you can and enjoy your conference. Thank you.